All right. Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Hope you're having a nice Friday. I'm going to do a quick refresher to make sure it's showing up on your feed. Uh, this is Paint with Lovejoy. And today's video, we're going to be painting a shark. Um, it will be kind of a friendly shark. I didn't put any blood or anything dramatic in there. Um, so a little bit of what you see on the screen. This is... Um, there we go. Sorry, everything's up and good. So yeah, so a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen. You can either pause the video and draw what you see on your canvas and then pick up the video and start painting along with me. Or after this demo, I will upload a traceable to the website and you can purchase that, download it, and then using carbon paper, you can transfer this line drawing to your canvas. So you've got a few options there. So for today's demo, um, I'm going to be in the background. I will use a knife and we're going to scrape some light blue as we go into dark blue towards the bottom. And then I will use uh, brushwork and probably some blue and then some gray in there for our great white shark. And as you can see, I do have a limited color palette. We've got white, blue, black, and teal. Um, so we are going to keep this kind of simple. All right. And then one other thing about what you're looking at. Uh, the canvas here, I have re-gessoed it, um, so that way I can use canvases over and over again. So feel free, there is a link in the description box below on how to re-gesso and reuse a canvas. So for my beginner painters, um, that's a really nice thing so that way well, you're not spending a whole lot of money on tons of canvas. So check that out. All right, we've got quite a few people jumping on. Awesome. Thank you guys. All right, from all over the country. Let's see, we've got Jen and Madison and Janet and Beverly and Mike. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and Adrienne. Sorry about that, missed that. But thanks so much for hanging out with me this morning, you guys. So for the palette knife, and there are multiple shapes of knives because I'm on a smaller canvas, I am using a smaller knife. But if you are working on a larger canvas, feel free to grab one of the larger knives. So what we're gonna do is this is going to be my style scraping method. So it is a little untraditional for palette knife. So I'm making a light teal. So pull some of your white aside, add a touch of your teal, and we're going to scrape this on the top of the canvas. So if you want, you actually just grab it. We kind of scrape it on there and it is very therapeutic. So we're going to be filling in the space from the edge of our shark all the way to the edges of the canvas. And if you need to, you know, move your knife in different directions, if you don't have a knife, you can do this with a brush. You can also do this with crayons or markers or colored pencils, pretty much anything that you have at home. You can follow along and still get creative. So utilize the tools that you have. All right. And again, this scraping method is more my style, um, but it is highly therapeutic. And I've been painting in this style professionally for probably about 15 years, pretty much um, since college. Yeah, because I kind of fell into this style when I was taking a knife painting class in college. Um, but because it is kind of a stress scraping and stress relieving, anything, any of your anxiety, any of your frustrations right now, throw it into the canvas. You can push pretty hard. Um, but like I said, it's just super, super therapeutic. I'll throw your, throw your emotions into your painting. All right, and I am using acrylic paint. And if you're using acrylic paint as well, don't stress if you actually get some of your colors um, inside your shark or somewhere where you don't want it. All you do is let this paint dry and anything that you don't like or anything you wanna cover up, you just paint right on top of it again. So lots of wiggle room for beginner painters. All right, and if you are following along and maybe you're holding your breath right now, I realized I was holding my breath. Take a big inhale, relax. This is just painting. It is not the end of the world. Hopefully it's the beginning of a new world for you, a new creative, expressive world for you. And if you have to mix your color, whether you're using a brush or a knife, and you have to mix it two or three times, do not stress about getting the exact same color each time. Your brain is learning a lot each time you mix your colors and it's understanding what colors, 
kind of how, how they interact with each other um, as the more that you mix them. So don't be upset in your beginning stages if you have to mix your color multiple times. Um, you're learning each time that you do that. All right. And at home, if you need to turn your canvas sideways, turn it upside down, feel free to adjust it. Because I'm shooting the video, I will keep it in the same orientation for you guys at home. And also, if you're painting on a stretched canvas like I am, continue that color around the tops, the sides, and even the bottom. It does look nice um, hanging on the wall, having that color wrap around the side. And it is easier to do it while you have the color made compared to trying to match the color at the end. So. All right, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm actually looking at the comments right now. Um, cool, cool. So I'm glad you, a few of you said you um, were here for the pizza painting yesterday. So feel free to send me pictures of what you end up painting for yours and email those to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. And really any paintings that you do of mine um, and even of other teachers, send me pictures. It really makes me happy to see um, what you guys do with the videos, your interpretation, and just the fact that you're painting at home. So now I'm going a little bit darker. I mixed some of the teal and the blue, and we're going to scrape this on the bottom of our canvas um, in the water, because I'm imagining that the water is a little bit darker towards the bottom. Now, if you want to use different colors than what I'm using, go right ahead, switch it out. If you don't want to add the darker color, you don't have to. Um, this video and even the instruction is just a mild, a simple guideline. Take the parts that work for you, adjust what you need for yours, and just have fun. It's just a nice time to get creative with everybody. And actually, I really kind of like this color, so I think I might fill up more of the space with that color. And if you find that you're painting and you kind of had an idea in mind, but as you start painting, um, you can maybe go, oh, maybe I want to change this. Maybe I want to go with a darker color. That's your instincts talking to you. So make sure you trust that. And then again, if you paint something that you don't like, you just paint on top of it, let it dry and paint on top. But if you can learn to trust your instincts while you're being creative, it will spill over into other aspects of your life and it will lead for very nice results. But it does take a while to kind of get comfortable and used to trusting your instincts. So like I said, I do actually really like this color, so I decided to change the whole background to go a little bit darker. And I will scrape some lighter colors on top of that um, after we add some base colors for our shark. Okay, I'm just going to make more, and it looks like we've got a few questions. Awesome. All right, so let's see. First question, Madison's asking, how many paintings have you done in all? Um, oh my gosh, my entire life or just for the YouTube channel? My entire life, uh, definitely tons and tons of paintings, because uh, I've been creative since I was probably four or five years old. And I've been a professional artist for about 20 years. Um, but as far as YouTube, I think I have about 100 videos on there, and I am constantly making more. And now that I'm doing the daily demos, um, I'm actually getting a new video and a new painting out there every single day. So I do recommend painting on a regular basis, even if it's weekly, monthly, if you can do daily. It's just to your benefit. Um, our world's not getting any less stressful, so it is up to you to kind of find creative outlets. Nice. And again, play with yours. Play with the colors that are shining through. The colors will place on top of it. It's just a nice escape. And let's see, we've got another question. Uh, Beverly, I'm glad you like the teal color. And asking, what brand of acrylic paint am I using? So I buy my paints in the half gallon since I usually teach classes. Um, hopefully again, once the social isolation is lifted. Um, actually, let's see, let's go with blue. Uh, so this brand of paint is Chroma Acrylics. And I purchased those, like I said, in the half gallon and you can get them from Dick Blicks. The closest thing that you can find at Michael's or an art store is gonna be Liquitex Basics. 
And Liquitex Basics is a student grade uh, paint and it's fairly affordable, so it's a nice place to start. And then after you get in the groove of uh, painting for a while, maybe one color, grab an artist grade color. It is a little more expensive. And just notice the difference between artist grade and student grade paint and see what you like. Artist grade paint tends to be a little more transparent. Um, so you have to apply it a little thicker sometimes for an opaque coverage, or sometimes you have to apply two or three coats. Where artist grade paint will be a little more expensive, um, but it will have a nice buttery consistency and a better opaque coverage. I personally use both um, artist grade and student grade paint in my work. I appreciate and like the transparency of some of the student grade paints for my scraping method. But good question. All right, so actually just reading over a few more. Oh, somebody said their pizza looked like a cheesecake. Oh, sorry about that, Janet. <laughs> so hopefully it looked a little better when you put the pepperoni on it, but go re it and paint something else or paint it again. All right, so we're gonna move into the shark. And let's see, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of brushwork for that because I'd like a little difference between the shark and the water. All right, so, and again, because I'm using a smaller canvas, I am in a middle flat brush, but if you're on a larger canvas, grab a bigger brush. And I'm actually gonna start with a medium gray. So I'm pulling some of this white aside, tiny, tiny, tiny amount of black will go a long way to make a gray. So start off with a small amount of black and you can always add more. And if you are watching this at home or watching the replay, I do recommend letting your background dry before you move into your shark, because especially since we're in a shade of gray, I don't necessarily want the teal or the blue to kind of throw up in there. Um, my background is not dry, because I am just keeping this as a 30 minute demo. So if you are following along quickly with me, just be very cautious as you are coming up next to um, the blue paint, or if you're overlapping like right here, I'm gonna have to overlap it. And where I'm going to overlap it, I'm actually going to apply that paint pretty thick so that way it covers it up. And I am going right over those black lines that I had from the beginning of the video, that initial outline that was on there when the video started. And as you move into brushwork, don't hold your breath. Breathe and relax. And I am using that middle gray, make it a touch darker. And all I want you to do at home is just observe the place where I put this middle gray. And then all you're going to do is do your best to recreate that position or that shape on your canvas at home. So as you're watching the video and you are painting, you are strengthening your eye hand coordination. You're looking at something on the screen and then you are taking your interpretation and applying it on your canvas. So, and the more that you do that, the more comfortable that gets and the easier that transition becomes. And there are some days that are better painting days than others. So be kind to yourself when you're having a good day and definitely be kind to yourself when you're having a not so good painting day, but don't give up painting. So I am putting this kind of medium gray, lighter gray on the top of the shark, the belly of the shark. I'm going to go for a much lighter gray because they usually have that nice white belly. And if you need to move down to one of the smaller pointy brushes, go right ahead and do that. And if you overlap a line, um, you can observe where I'll replace it. Like I just went over the eyeball um, and I did go over the gills right here, or you can always reference that traceable and redraw it um, at the end. All right, so we've got our kind of medium gray here. I'm gonna make a slightly darker gray and we're gonna put some shadow on there before we move into the white underbelly. So that medium gray on the plate, I'm actually just adding a little bit more black to it and going for a darker gray. And we're gonna put this at the base of the tail and paint right on top of that medium gray. And I think I might switch down to that small pointy brush in just a moment. And as you apply this on top of another color, I am using light pressure and you're blending a little bit with that base color, the lighter gray, with the darker gray you're putting on top of it. And this is called a wet on wet blending method. So 
So again, you're strengthening your power of observation by seeing where I place it. I'm actually going to grab the small pointy brush as I do some of the blending in here. And you're observing what you see on the screen and then you're placing it on your canvas. Okay, you're doing good. And as I'm blending here with the smaller brush, again, just light pressure and softening uh, the perimeter between the darker and the lighter gray. And making a little bit more. See up by where that eye is, we're going to go a little bit darker. And as you're in the groove of painting, I want you to get out of your chair every now and then, walk about four to five feet away from your painting and observe it from that distance. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. So as you're painting, get in that habit of actually looking at it from that distance and then you can go back and go oh maybe i need a little bit of a color here maybe i need a darker shadow here and adjust on what you see as it looks from the distance right. okay so i'm actually going to clean that brush out and we're going to move to a lighter gray so i'll make a new pile right here and we're going to give this shark a little bit of his underbelly and then I think we might go back to the water, scrape on a few more colors, and then go back to the shark. So again, with this being a 30 minute demo, I do jump back and forth while I'm letting things slightly dry before I do another section. So clean the brush really good, pull the white aside, and we're going for even lighter than that medium gray that we were using. So start off with even less black paint. So a lot of times I like to just slide it right there and then move over and then I can pull a little bit more black paint as needed. But you are going super, super light gray. So I'm not quite sure how well this will show up on the screen. So I'm basically taking a super light gray. Let me make it a touch darker just so you guys can see it easier at home. But like I said, super light gray for the underbelly. And I am bringing it up to that middle gray, painting right on top of it, going right over the mouth, right over this other fin. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll make a slightly darker gray than this and put some shadows on here. And we do have a little fin down there and then we've got the other side fin right here. And again, if your background color overlapped that area, just apply your paint a little bit thicker or possibly apply two coats of it. Awesome, awesome. And actually just looking again, see if there's any questions. Feel free to leave a comment and I'll address it while on screen. And I do these daily demos every day at 11 o'clock. It's been great for the isolation and our social distancing and it's been awesome to keep a schedule for me. So leave a comment of what you want me to paint in the future. If you go to um, the main page on my YouTube and scroll down, you can see the future subjects for the rest of this week and I think moving into next week. So leave a comment and I'll put a new subject matter on there of what you wanna paint. All right. Okay, so now I'm actually grabbing, uh, let's see, let's make this light gray just a touch darker. And we're gonna put some shadows on this little underbelly Again, using that light pressure and I'm going right on top of the super light gray with a slightly darker gray. Very, very subtle. And putting it in where that pect uh, not pectoral, the side fin is. Actually, those might be the pectoral fins. I know that's the dorsal fin. I forgot what the little one in the back is called. It has been a while. All right, so still with a little bit more of that gray right where that other side fin is make that a little darker going right underneath I can still slightly see the outline through the paint and again if you can't see that on yours um, just observe where I'm placing it on screen and come close to that area all right and let's go back to where that mouth is 
I'm getting that shadow in there. We will put some white sharp teeth on there. They'll just be little lines. And again, with this, I'm using that medium gray and I still am on that flat brush, um, but if you need to move down to that small pointy brush for you. All right, so now we're gonna clean the brush. Awesome, yeah, we got some more people joining. We've got Kat and Dennis and Jen and Madison and Vicki and Janet and Mike. I know I already said you guys' names, but awesome. Thank you guys so much for jumping on and hanging out with me this morning. And thanks for liking the, the video, Mike. I appreciate it. Yeah, make sure you guys um, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of future videos. All right, so let's see. Before this paint dries on the shark, I'm actually going to go in with some straight white. I'm grabbing kind of a small chunk of it. And again, if this brush is too much, move down to the small pointy brush. And kind of right here, right where the gills would be, I'm going to slap some of that white on there, try to put it on kind of thick, and right where the nose would be. And it may be a little difficult to see on the screen, but I'm just using light pressure and again, blending that white into that lighter gray. And I'm not moving my brush as much as I did for the darker shadows uh, because this white does get eaten up quickly in other colors. So I'm just kind of placing it so we have a hint of where there's a lighter shade. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the top of the shark because we are imagining that the sun is coming through the water at the top of the canvas. And I think this one will be a little more obvious for you at home. So basically just taking that white, going right along the top of my shark. And then I'm gonna wipe that brush off, wipe off the excess paint. And then again with that light pressure, just softening the super pure white into that medium gray a little bit so it's not a sharp line. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable you'll get with this type of blending. So again, be kind to yourself as you're beginning this. Um, and especially if this is your first time trying blending. All right, we got one more spot. Oh, actually, I forgot about this little side fin right here. So we have this darker gray, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of that medium gray, and we're imagining where I'm putting the white, this is the top of that fin on the side of the body of the shark. You can see his other fin down here, but we gotta put a little highlight in for this one. And right at the top of the dorsal fin, put a little bit, and the tail fin, the fluke. And then again, wiping that off, and then light pressure, just pulling a little bit of that white into the medium gray. Same thing on the dorsal fin. And up close, if it feels too much, like, oh my gosh, that's way too much pure white, do that effect. Step five to ten feet away from your painting and see how it looks from that distance. All right, so we're gonna let that dry a little bit. And it does look like my background's pretty dry already, so that's nice. So I'm gonna take, go back to the knife and grab just a touch of the white, just so you can see what it looks like when you scrape a new color on top of dry paint on here. It stays a little bit more solid, and I'm gonna scrape some light blue over this in a moment too. So right now, this white might look too harsh or too bright, but I will tone it down with another color to scrape on top of it. So play with this at home. Play with putting different colors, letting the layers dry in between each color, and then applying another color on top of it. You will notice, um, and this is the reason I like the student grade paint, is even though I'm scraping on this pure white, I'm scraping it so it goes on thin, and you can see the colors from underneath, and that affects your interpretation of the painting. And then if you look at that and go, oh, maybe it's a little too much. I wanted to go back to the blue or the light teal. You can just make that light teal again. And again, just scrape right on top of it. There is no limit to how often you can go back and forth with these scraped colors. And if you check out my main website for my artwork, lovejoycreations.com, and check out my portfolio, you can see many of my paintings in this style. And my paintings on there have close to 100 layers of paint scraped on them. So there really is no limit 
to how many times you can scrape paint on there. And I love that you can see colors underneath, you can see new colors on top, um, and even in different light, uh, different lighting elements, uh, my paintings look completely different. So start observing how you are looking at things and how things look in different light. Because that's a big portion of what art is, is observing your environment. All right, and again, if you overlap your shark with your background color, that's okay. Um, you can go back in. If you wanna do a black outline on your shark, that will give it a bit of a pop art feel. You can do that with their brush and black paint. Um, or you just go back with your other colors. All right, so we're gonna give this shark an eyeball. And you can even reference the traceable of where it was at, but his little eyeball's right here. I'm gonna give him a little nostril, and then we'll give him some white teeth. So with the pointy brush or even a toothpick, if you're working really small, basically just gonna create a dot. And again, observe where I place it on the screen or check out that traceable. And I'm gonna put a little nostril line one on the other side. Clean that brush out really good. Oh, actually before we do that, we'll clean our brush twice. I'm actually gonna go back to black. I forgot the gills. And these, uh, as you're making these skinny lines, you wanna treat your brush kind of like a pencil. So you're using just a light pressure and you're actually just using the tip of the brush. And sometimes this is where the toothpick comes in handy or a paper clip. Um, and if you end up making these too fat, just wipe them off with a paper towel, reapply your base colors, let it dry, and then reapply your gills again. Uh, you can also do this with a Sharpie marker after all your paint is dry. But I do recommend doing it with the brush just for good practice. All right, and I give a little bit more shadow in his mouth and then we're gonna clean the brush. We're gonna use pure white paint. We're gonna put a dot in the eyeball for a catch light, even though they don't always have catch lights underwater, but it helps kind of break up that space of that black eyeball. So again, using that light pressure. And if you look at the eyeball at about the one o'clock spot, I'm gonna put a little dot. There we go. And then again, you might want to use a toothpick for this because I'm going to just do little, almost little dash marks or little triangles for each of the teeth. And putting it on kind of thick so that way it contrasts. Oh, my shark needs to go to a dentist, but you know, that's all right. Given just the illusion that we have that on there. All right, and now I'm looking at it through the camera. So I'm looking at it from a distance as well. Um, I'm actually, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna actually go back into the background. I wanna put a little bit darker blue on there. And again, sometimes that's how it works. You just have to kind of go with the vibe of your painting. So again, if you feel like you should change it or go in a different direction than what you were planning to do in the beginning stages of painting, it's good to do that. So trust that. Let's go darker. All right. And I'm actually just going more, let's go back to the teal and blue. So switching colors, going back to that teal and blue. And I like to where the light places are on my subject matter, like the light places on the shark. I like having a dark color behind it because it gives more contrast. So that's what I'm doing right now is going back with a darker color for the background. And that will make the illusion that my shark is popping forward more. And as you're a painting and in the creative arts, you are a magician. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat surface. So that's nothing to be shy about and that's something to embrace. We all need a little more magic in our lives. All right, and again, as you do this and kind of change something, do that distance thing 
look at it from five feet away. Does it look better? Is it having the effect that you wanted? And then go back and adjust. And then even going back and grabbing that white teal. <laughs> Not too bad. All right, let's see. Any other questions? Awesome. Thanks for a few more people liking and checking out and subscribing to the page. Very cool. Let me do a quick look from above. Awesome. And yeah, make sure you send me photos of what you paint. Email those to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in social media at paintwithlovejoy um, for Instagram. And actually, I think that's all I have. And at with paint with lovejoy for YouTube. So uh, I believe tomorrow I am painting a rainbow unicorn, another viewer request. So it should be fun. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys have a great day. Great weekend. Keep on painting and stay healthy and safe. I will see everybody tomorrow. Thanks so much.